Today I want to show you my automotive coil saturation tester. I need to be able to characterize different coil on plug and coil near plug packs for coil saturation time. Here I will be testing a Toyota 2 Tower CNP coil near plug pack. And of course the reason for doing this is to get the code correct for my uh, ECU that I'm building for a wasted spark Onan two cylinder generator engine. This setup is for testing almost any four wire coil near plug or coil on plug pack. I don't know if they all work the same way, but I have used two of them from different manufacturers and the wiring seems similar between them. However, the connector shapes and pins vary all over the map as far as we can tell. What they all have in common is that battery power comes from the two outer terminals one of the inner terminals needs a high, high going 5 volt signal to charge the coil and when the signal goes low the spark is produced. The other inner terminal seems to be a feedback terminal allowing the ECU to determine whether a spark was actually produced or not. I simply ground it through 1000 ohms. The specific coil under test is from a 1990s era Toyota RAV4 and some other Toyota models of that period. It is called a two tower CNP pack and is used in a wasted spark application where this one coil is connected to the spark plugs of two cylinders that fire on both upstrokes. I'm using an ancient homemade 0 to 16 volt 5 amp battery charger with 17,000 microfarads of uh, filtering to power the coil even though you only see a small uh, 12 volt battery on the bench. That battery works fine around uh, 12 volts or so but I need a way to go lower and to go higher for these tests. So I'm actually using the battery charger for most of this video. There's an LED strobe that you can see flashing I hope uh, in parallel with the coil pulse and there's an I squared C LCD reporting RPM and coil charge milliseconds. There are lots of ground wires running around and many too long leads that act as antennas for spark discharge. So you may see some occasional flashing if the UNO is reset by RF spikes throughout this testing. Let's see if we can make some of those things happen. There you can see some of this flashing as the antenna action resets the uh, UNO. And if I turn the spark power off, you'll see that that totally stops. Now we have no voltage and no problem. As soon as we turn the voltage up, okay, so I obviously have to do better shielding. And, and better, uh, heavier ground wires and stuff. So here I'm turning the speed pot down. You can see the light flashing slower. Turning the speed pot down pretty much all the way. And then turning it up. It's a nonlinear pot. up to my maximum of 3,000 flashes faster. Okay, there you can see trigger milliseconds is at 5. And here I turn it up all the way to 8. Okay, and then back down to 1. Okay. And I'll just set it back in the middle. Okay. This is a look at the junky part. Here we've got uh, two spark plugs hooked to this just piece of grounding material. The the coil on uh, coil near plug wires uh, coming to the coil on plug uh, coil coil near plug coil and uh, this is the input connector and there are four leads here and I'll talk about them, the outer two being positive and negative 
and one of the inner ones being a 5 volt trigger signal and the other one being a feedback signal. This is my power supply. Uh, turn him on. Yeah. Crank up some voltage. We have voltage going up and we have a little voltmeter here on the uh, sitting on the battery. The battery isn't in the circuit right now. Okay, we get up to about uh, 9 volts and I don't know if you could see it or hear it, but sparks are happening. So that's at uh, 9.6 volts right now. And if we increase that up to, there's 13. Oh, by the way, this is my old battery charger that I made uh, many, many years ago. It's just a rectifier and a, uh, tra uh, uh, a fixed linear transformer and a uh, uh, auto transformer. Uh, to control the voltage and I've got it filtered with 28500 microfarad capacitors to try to give it a little something. I am using channel 1 of my trusty old Tektronix 422 oscilloscope to measure the trigger pulse from the UNO's digital pin 8 and channel 2 of the scope to measure coil current in the negative lead of the coil. The actual current is unimportant to me. I only need to see the wave shape to determine when the current flattens out at saturation. So now we see on the top traces the digital signal going to the coil. And on the bottom trace we're seeing the uh, charging of the coil, the current through it. This is always a tough thing to do, but you can see the coil charges up and discharges when the signal goes away. And that's at 13.5 uh, volts and um, 4 milliseconds. So if I turn that up to 5, 6, 7, you can see some resetting going on there. That's induced stuff. And you can see the coils just going into saturation at 7 milliseconds. Why we're not going to 8 right now, I don't understand. The code for this tester is pretty simple. Here you see the guts of the loop. I simply read the coil pulse length pot and map to the 1000 or 8000 microsecond range that I need since that's the way the main program stores the time. <laughs> then I divide it by 1000 to get milliseconds to send to the LCD. Then I read the other pot, pot value, and map that to the number of milliseconds that it takes for one simulated revolution, in this case uh, 100 RPMs to 3000 RPMs. This is uh, showing uh, coil uh, charge time and saturation time. Right now I have uh, my simulator running at about 1800 RPMs and uh, I have 5 milliseconds of charge time on programmed in. Now I'm going to go down to 1 slowly, so 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. So that's the littlest amount of charge I can put into it because that's the way I've set it up. Now I'm simply going to go up from two, three, four, five, Still no saturation. Six. Climbing even faster right now. Six. 
7 and finally at 7 milliseconds we're getting saturation and 8 we have even more saturation and I might add the, the higher the current the more resetting I'm getting because I still have some RF creeping in so we'll go back down to 7 little bit of saturation so I'd run that between probably six and seven for that particular coil with a voltage of 12 to 12 and a half volts applied note the little power supply meter sitting on top of the garden tractor battery that's how I keep track of the voltage applied to the coil To do the testing, I simply plug the UNO in here, plug my power supply in, which I've already done, and choose a voltage level, which I can see here that's about 13 volts, plus or minus a little bit, and then start taking data. Here I simply run the uh, speed pot through its full range just so you can see how the LCD responds and the little LED flashes. That's, this is a nonlinear pot so it goes up pretty fast just toward the end. I suppose it's from some audio source. <laughs> 